welcome to another exciting edition of Inside the Humidor. We're going to try to move through some of the cigar lists today. And you can find many of these cigars at our shop. And most of these are $10 or less, which is a good buy. And thank you and enjoy the show. <laughs> Anyhow, we're going to get into these cigars. First, let's talk about what the the list mean. You know, I, I know you hear a lot of people say, well, these lists don't mean anything. But they do to customers. They do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They do quite a bit to customers. Um, I'm surprised. Many, many people come in. They want asking for the top cigar. And it, it, it's such a subjective thing. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's just like wine or whiskey. It's very much according to your palate. Right. So these are the best cigars to certain reviewers. Right. And that's they are they are truly incredible cigars. But I would still encourage everyone to go out and find what are the best cigars for you. Right. 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 But these would be a good list to start with finding a cigar that might interest you. And uh, I'll as we go through this today, I'm going to try to highlight that some of these actually ended up on more than one list, which tends to lend a little more credibility to them sometimes. being in the top list. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. But uh, let's start toward the bottom at Ramon Alonis by AJ. Oh, the one by AJ. Yeah, uh, we don't have one to show anyone here, but that was number 25 in Aficionados. 24 was a Placentia. 23 was a one-off. One so, by Lucia. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, Illusion usually finds his way onto some of these lists. Dion makes great cigars. You can't, yeah. say, you, you can't take anything away from Dion. Now, the Trinidad and Santiago, which we were one of the first stores to get, uh, right there, that Trinidad and Santiago made the list is number 22. Okay. I, I wish you, maybe it'll give it a push. Uh, the San Cristobal Quintessence. Nice Corona stuff. Gorda got number 21. Rocky's 15th anniversary, we don't have here. It's a 20. And Cuban Cohiba got number 19. Got to have it on the list. Got, yeah. yeah. And Nat Chico got 18. McAuliffe, 17. Hoya de Nicaragua is another one we carry. The Robusta Grand, Grande, we're, we're sold out of right now, so I put a, one of their nice big 660s there. That is a very enjoyable cigar. It is. It's a very full cigar. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Very full. Nice flavors. Uh, Villager Sandoro Colorado got 15. Which will never be back in the store as long as I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Fausto. Dang. The 153 Toro. Got yeah. on the list is number 14. The chisel for La Flor Dominicana. There we go. Uh, which we don't have one. Which we normally have. sold out. We smoked them all. <laughs> They're sold out right now, so I brought up the Maduro. Can you talk a little bit about the difference about this um, chisel? What makes the chisel a chisel? It's actually the way they make the tip. I don't know if we can get this on camera or not. It's kind of fine detail. Let's take it out of the wrapper. Yeah, might be a little bit easier to see. A lot of cigars, the most common non-regular type of tip is the torpedo tip here. Again, I don't know if you can see this. This one's kind of flat. It just kind of comes into a flat point. Usually they're rounded. Even on box presses, they tend to be kind of a rounded. On this one, though, it's just flat. Kind of like the end of a chisel, plus the name. What's great about these is you don't need a cutter for them. You can actually squeeze it, crack that wrapper at the top, and you can smoke it just that way. Which is very, very handy if you don't have a cutter. Or you, or you can bite the end off. There's that <laughs> here. Old school. <laughs> Old school. Do you guys know the story behind how the chisel came to be? I do not. No, I don't. Well, it seems that our man from the LaFleur... Okay. Likes to chew on his cigars. That, that makes sense. 
And so he said, geez, why do I have to chew them down? And he went to one of his rollers. He said, you think you can make me one? It's all chewed down. He goes, <laughs> you know, he goes no, 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 you know, like it's all chewed down. Already how it would be. And so they came up with that. They actually got a patent on that. So that no one else can make, actually make the chisel. It's got to vary from that in order to do that. Yeah. So that's the story. I knew about the patent. I didn't know about how it came to be. Yeah, that's the story that Ed dropped the knowledge. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's actually one of my favorite after dinner sticks. I would recommend eating beforehand. It's oh yeah. It's definitely potent. It's yeah. got it's got a, quite a bit of nicotine in it, but just a phenomenal slow smoke. Light one up, sit back and relax. It yeah. is a very good smoke. Yeah, very good. And and I I think that we'll find it. This list, what we have represented here, is going to uh, also be. I, I didn't bring a punch up, but punch is old punch blend actually got on the list. The after dinner size, which is sort of a short Churchill. Okay. Um, they, changed they changed their they bands. They changed their bands. Boxes so if you go into your if you go into your local shop and they hand you a punch and it's different than what you've had before, the rat, the band, the box look different. We're not trying to pull one over on you. It is the same product. They've just updated the market. Yeah, on all their punches and their particles. Yeah, the particles looks really nice. Yeah. Quai d'Arce got number 11. Number 10 was one that's doing done well here, and we've also had a few that we've brought us on is the Monte Cristo Nicaragua. Monte Cristo mm -hmm. Nicaragua is a very nice cigar. Very nice cigar. Oh, thank you. Very nice. All this has really come a long way in the last couple yeah. of years as they yeah. changed up their blending group. Yeah. Really putting out some very, very interesting stuff. Yeah. If you've sworn off all of products in the past because they've always been kind of one dimensional and boring, um, I invite you to come back and try them again. Um, the Nicaraguan, the San Andre, and the 505, the um, 1875 Nicaragua. Give all those a shot. They're, they're actually very, very Did, he have AJ, did they have AJ make the Nicaragua or Placentia? I don't know. Okay. All right. It doesn't say AJ on the box. I'm assuming it's yeah. not. Yeah. Now, Black Market Esteli. <laughs> now, we don't have the Torpedo in that, but we do have other sizes. And the Black Market Esteli also ended up on the list. And that is... That is a very nice cigar. It's no, it's a nice approachable medium, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. And uh, has some nice Nicaraguan flavors. Then the Oliva V Milanio Churchill is number eight. Now, okay. We don't have the Churchill in stock right now. We fly through those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we have the little Robusto. Now, ding ding. This is another. This is one of those on board one lists. Okay, the Milanio uh, Robusto itself was actually number, well, no, the Maduro Robusto was on the list for Cigar Snob as number two. Okay. So, uh, this, the Oliva Milanios, and... I don't know if it would be number two, but it's it's pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. This wasn't number two with Aficionado, but the Maduro was with uh, Snob. And then uh, JFR's Lunatic, which we don't... Carry. That was uh, number seven. Hemingway work of art, which is backstocked, is of course it is. coming in. <laughs> the Padron Family Reserve, number 44. Now, the natural is the one that got it. And the, yeah, okay, that's what we have. Yeah, good. And uh, that's uh, a very nice cigar. That is, a member of our $30 cigar night. When we have that, that is a $30 Padron. And most people agree that it's worth it. The wise man, Maduro, was also on the list twice. And we've completely sold out That's of the that wise man, that Maduro. That doesn't scratch me where I itch very often. I, 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 there's nothing wrong with it. I, it's not a bad cigar. It's just not in my flavor profile. Yeah. So... How about you? Have you tried that cigar? I have not had a chance to try it yet. No. I'm looking forward to it if and when we get it back in stock. Yeah, yeah. It is a nice cigar, but 
I don't know about being all the way up to three. I don't think it's three. I don't, the, 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 the top five on this list, I'm kind of shaky on, to be quite honest. Number two was my father-in-law, Opulentia Toro, and we have a Robusto on the table. Opulentia didn't really catch on here, but um, that's a good cigar. My father doesn't make any bad cigars. Um, and then Carrillo. E.P. Carrillo. Now, what I like to tell people to do, because this was advertised as his Nicaraguan version of La Historia, is buy one of each. <laughs> what was it, 2015? Uh, the La Historia was number two? Yes. Yeah. So here Not he, a bad way to go. Here he do comes it back, back, back three years later. Yeah. Yeah. Do it back to back. So and which one you prefer? We have both of those. They're really not both nice cigars. Very nice. Yep. Very nice. So what about Aficionado's list? It wouldn't be my list. I see why everything is on there. Mm -hmm. It's just... I don't... I don't know. It's some of, some of it I understand. A lot of it I don't. It's just... I don't know. Hey, I mean, they're all for somebody. Somebody likes them. Mm -hmm. I can't really say anything bad about any of them. Mm -hmm. They're just not all my favorites. Well, you know, that's one of the advantages that we all have right now. Mm -hmm. We're in a, I've said it before on this show, and I'll say it again, I'll probably say it again, is we're truly in a golden age of cigar making. Oh, definitely. I mean, the blending, we've had people branch out. You know, you've got guys that will even throw seven different tobaccos together uh, in a same cigar, and you think you you know, gotta be a mess when you smoke it, and it's not. No, they blend and other guys are more dimensional for some things. Uh, one thing that uh, Nick Perdomo does is the lot twenty-three. Mm -hmm. All the tobacco is from one feet, one lot. I mean, well, two lots, lot two and lot three. And he wasn't gonna call it lot two and three. It was lot twenty-three. What's so, wrong with that? It's a great name. But that's. All that's Esteli tobacco. No Condega, no uh, Ometepe. Ometepe, no uh, Jalapa. It's all. Those are three of my favorite tobaccos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But. San Andreas. No, uh, he'll never find that on one of Nick's cigars. No. <laughs> if it's not Nicaraguan or Ecuadorian Connecticut, it's probably not going to be there. But anyhow. Um, the interesting thing to me about some of these is that, um, you know, there's been a lot of accusation towards aficionado that whoever spends the most money advertising with them get guaranteed they're going to be on the list right. kind of thing. They deny that vociferously. Well, of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> <Good job. clears throat> Excuse me. Work ferociously. If you saw one of the uh, podcasts that I saw when they when an interviewer actually asked that <laughs> of one of the people with aficionado, and yeah, I thought he was going to go across the table at him. But, <laughs> but you know, we all what you were saying. We all have our reasons. You said this too. We all have our reasons for liking certain cigars. And these are the cigars that the Aficionado Magazine t sampling group came up with. And they blind smoke them, supposedly. They blind smoke them. They have a band on them, which has a number. And that's all the band that's on it. And they're smoked that way. Well, we've used Aficionado's ranking system in the shop here before. Oh, it's a good one. And I don't like it. Well, Okay. I, I honestly don't like it because the taste of the cigar counts for so little in their ranking system. I I think the taste of the cigar should be the biggest the biggest piece of whatever your ranking system is. Okay. Should be how it tastes, not how it looks, not how it burns, not what the wrapper looks like, not what the band looks like. None of that. None of that matters to me. I don't care what a cigar looks well, like. You know, they do I don't give it 30%. Oh, 30%. Big deal. <laughs> I will say I want a cigar to burn nicely. 
I don't want it to canoe or, you know, or give me trouble burning. But aside from that, I, I'm with Kevin. I, I, I care about the flavor, the taste. Yeah. Well, the way the, yeah. the way the cigar burns has so little to do with how it's made and more with how it's stored. Because if it's too dry, it's going to go up like a Christmas tree. Right. If it's too wet, it's going to be too hard to smoke. Tunneling, that could be anything. It, it could be. I would argue if you get a lot of if you get a lot of stems, then that generally indicates or even a stem or two. It's usually poor construction or somebody missed it when they were rolling it. All cigars have stems. In I could cut right. anything open in the shop right now and find stems. In yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to you're going to at problem. the least find veins. Yes. 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 At the least. As long as it's not like the one Cuban I smoked one time that had a literal twist in it. Tobacco tends to get laid like this in the cigar. In the middle of the cigar, the tobacco was actually twisted like this so that you could not draw through it. Right, I was going to say it, and that's where construction comes in, and that's where um, we say that we also rate cigars based on their draw. Right. I'm not saying that the other stuff isn't important. You're saying it's, it's too the, little. I say that the, 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 the ranking, the percent flavor. they give to flavor and taste, it's too small compared to everything else. Might be. Might be. Interesting thing to think about. People there could give us some input what they think. Definitely. Yeah. You know, we could we could use that. Come in and yell at us if you want. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come in. Say, guy, you guys are out of your head. I don't right. want an ugly cigar. What? <laughs> well, aficionado is if everyone out there doesn't already know, cigar aficionado is the largest marketed magazine on cigars that there is. Yes, it is a magazine that tends to be sort of upper shelf uh -huh. in its approach to advertising. It's more of a lifestyle magazine. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and then uh, Cigar Journal, which is where I want to go next. Cigar Journal has an approach. It's usually published in two languages. In our country, we've had it two ways: English and Spanish, and English and German. Um, I don't know how they decide, but uh, I think we get more English and Spanish now. Um, but it has, to me, it's a better overall cigar magazine in the, its approach because it will give you articles about people who are rolling cigars, about people who blend cigars, about they actually talk about people working in the industry and follow people through a day, a day or a week of their life working in the industry. I still say the cigar blending is a dark art that I'll never understand. Oh no, <laughs> it's a I bit agree. like an automatic transmission. You know, things go in, things happen, out comes the end product. I have no idea how it works, but as far as I'm concerned, it's magic. Well, they're like master chefs. Oh, definitely. Exactly. I mean, they are master chefs. That's what they are. Or and master blenders. People, I mean, people who blend a good, a fine whiskey or, or scot, a scotch right. whiskey. It's the same, same thing. Definitely. And it's amazing how many good ones there are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, let's move on to journal. Now, journal's leader was a cigar that's only available in Europe. And you've heard me say this before, folks. I don't care that it's only available in Europe because it doesn't do anything for me. And that's the Rocky Patel Grand Reserve Toro. Actually got number one. I haven't had it. I can't say anything about it. I can't it. either. I can think of probably some other European releases that will blow it out of the water, but again, I haven't had it, so... Yep, yep. The, the AJ's Enclave Broadleaf came in number two. Interesting. A, AJ's mm -hmm. Enclave Broadleaf, right over here. That came in number two. They picked the Churchill sizes as a Toro. Very interesting. Yep. That came in number two. And then the Padron... Uh, Subaramo, which is the first tubo okay. that uh, Padron came out with. Interesting. Uh, that got number three. Um, it's in the 1964, which is okay. probably their most famous series. 
and then uh, Pappy Van, Van Winkle's Robusta Grande. I'm going to stop you right here. <laughs> <laughs> that cigar should not be in anybody's top anything list unless it's the most overpriced crap you've ever smoked. <laughs> Ouch. That cigar, Ouch. That cigar is complete and total marketing. And I've now lost my job. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. You're right. I agree with you. It is. I have you ever smoked it? I have, and I didn't knock my socks off. It's. I got uh, one as a sample, and I still overpaid for it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that hurts. Because he didn't get another cigar instead. Well, no. Well, Sam gave me a sample of it when mm -hmm. they were still distributed. I don't know if they still distributed. Uh, I, think State still does or not, I think there's been some discussion with the people that make Pappy about, about it. Wow, what a terrible marketing exercise that thing was. Holy <laughs> crap. But it's Pappy, and everybody wants Pappy. No matter, how much, no matter how expensive it gets or how hard it is to get, I think that adds to the mystique. It's what, 2600 a bottle in the secondary market now? Pretty much. Wow. I, I saw it uh, when I was in Vegas. You can find it. That's, I think what, that's what jacked the price up. Mm -hmm. 250 a shot. It's insane. <laughs> I'll stick to my good old Lafrank log of wool. It's just easy. I digress. No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's what this is about. Talking about the. Yeah, how, moving on. I know. <laughs> I, I was hit the same way. Number five. Number five was the Perdomo Habano BBA Sun Grown Epicure, of which I'm also smoking one. This is the interesting thing about this cigar is that they wanted to remarket it, and so they took the old Habano off and redid all the bands and everything. And Nick also felt that it needed some push and so they used some higher primings in in this one a little more kick a little, little more kick yeah and i think it's it they say it's now their number two cigar in the company is the habano bba so i guess nick was right about what they wanted to do there davidoff got the next spot in their nicaragua box press I haven't had the box press. I have yeah. had the regular Nicaragua. It is very enjoyable. It's a cigar. very, very enjoyable. Yes. I think I just got one in a sampler pack. I got it. Uh, Cuban Partigas is next. I love a good Cuban Partigas. I do. It's the villain. Yes. One of my are, one nice. of my favorites from them. Them and the Bolivars. Mm -hmm. Big fan. Villager. And then Alec Bradley Prinsado. Lost Art. Ah. There we go. I okay. like that. That's a good cigar. Yep. Lost Art got on the list. Got, uh, let's see, number nine. That goes for the Pappy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I mean, I couldn't find That's a Pappy. Sad. Isn't we that have, nice? Do we still have some? Yeah, they're in the, the Fuente cap. Are they really? Yep. Bottom shelf. Oh, I thought I sold <laughs> I thought I sold all of them. I think someone. we sold like two boxes. Okay. Either way, uh, you can tell what most of us think of the Pappy. Go on in and smoke one and tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. Love to hear it. Be glad. Sure. The uh, Oscar Valeris Cicerone. That's a good cigar. Yep. That got in there. And uh, La Galera, who also makes some on Snob's list, too, uh, they got a number of mentions. It's one I haven't had. Balmoral Anejo XO. Not a terrible that. cigar. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Find that one to be enjoyable. Fagafina comes out with these special ones, and I'm wondering if they don't only come out in Europe because they've got things like Fagafina Classic Year of the Pig, and I would think that if it was available, we'd know about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably one of those things. And then uh, the Gurkha Heritage Maduro. Don't even get me started. Uh, uh, Ramon and Lotus again. Okay. So that's a double. Vegas Dupiterale Grand 
Reserva, Brick House has a new double Connecticut. Interesting. And Not their bad. Corona Long got, got that. Placentia's Alma once again got on the list. Placentia makes good cigars. Tatuajes, RC number three. I've had that. La Aurora, Hoya Silver is on both a couple lists. Opalentia is on again. La Flor Dominicana, La Avocado. That is a nice cigar. I like that cigar. Yeah, the avocado? Yeah. Not actually the translation. I, just <laughs> the avocado. I know. Avocado. It's a dance of some kind, I do believe. Must be. They like dancing at La Flor. <laughs> and then uh, Macanudo Inspirado. Interesting choice. Hmm. The Toro. This is the Churchill. But that's that's what rounds out the list there. And we'll take another show. We'll take a look at, at uh, Cigar Snob. Okay. And we'll talk about the list and what they mean to retailers and what they mean to the customer. I'm just happy that Cigar Fishing Out of Cigar of the Year is actually something you can find. Yes, thank you. Unlike last year, it was the Eye of the Shark, which is impossible to find. Right. Four accounts in their territory get it. I can't get it. If you find it, more power to you, but it's just... And it wasn't reorderable. From what I understand, that anyone like our uh, friendly supplier in downtown Blooms, right. he doesn't, he wasn't able to get it where he stopped. And, and he's, he's the biggest he's account in the territory. He's the biggest yeah. Opus account, yeah, in western Pennsylvania. Yeah, makes no sense. Yeah. And if he can't get it, nobody around here is going to get it. No. He, he, I think he eventually got them, but they were like, they came in like months, months right. after the list. Right. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, folks, I hope we haven't given you too much information to you. <laughs> It's enough of my angry ramblings. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, now. If you want to find find these, they're all available online at the magazine's websites. Uh, Cigar Aficionado, you can get their lists all the way back to 2004, actually. Um, but the to highlight again what we would call the number one, the Carrillo Encore Majestic, which we have here. You take out the European as number one, that makes AJ's Enclave Broadleaf top in journals list. And to give you a little premiere, the number one for snob was Sin Compromiso. And that was a Dumbarton Trust uh, cigar. So uh, we'll talk more about them next time. In the meantime, Go into your local tobacconist. You find a cigar to try off we mentioned. And you get your favorite one also. And then you take one and go out there and smoke one. Thanks for being with us. It's inside the humidor. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to sit down with us and Listen to us ramble incoherently for the most part. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down below here. We'll be happy to get back to you as soon as we can. Make sure you like and subscribe. It means a lot to us. It helps us get higher up so you can find us a little easier. Make sure you find us on our socials. We've got Stack Cigars on Twitter, Stack Cigars on Instagram. Our Facebook page, however, is the Smokestack PGH, Everything Tobacco. Find us there. Ask us anything you want to ask us. Thank you again for spending so much time with us. Really appreciate you.